All right, morning, you two. Uh, we're going to be checking out a unit today. Um, customers complained of um, AC not cooling. So we're going to go check it out and see what exactly is the problem. I've already not been introduced myself to the customer. So grab my tools. We'll go right in and see what's going on. Okay, I'm gonna start set the cool, set the 71. So now we identify which system exactly it is for this area of the home. And that shouldn't be hard. It's obviously the one that's not cooling. The customer really didn't know, all right, but they are labeled, it appears. First floor kitchen, unit one. Second floor master bedroom, unit three. Second floor, so this may be it here. And then this other unit is the second floor unit also. So it could be either unit. So we'll figure that out. So we've identified the unit that we're working on. It's unit number four, which serves the second floor bedrooms and the gym. And it's a Linux on. Uh, I'm like it was maybe installed back in 2002. So it's about 15 years old. So we'll take a look and we'll see um, why the unit's not cooling. The blower mode is running. Um, the evaporator coil is clean. Um, the filter probably could use a change in. This system has an air purification uh, system on it, which is an indoor air quality product. We've already checked the drain line. There's no standing water there, so the back of the drain definitely isn't the problem. And we've also checked the secondary float switch in the auxiliary pan, and that seems to be fine. <laughs> Uh, now the customer has uh, a five-inch filter, and I've taken a look at that, and I'm gonna say it could it could use a change, but it's not too bad. But the unit isn't having a problem of icing up or anything like that, so it's just not cooling. So it appears the condensing unit is not running. So now we'll uh, head out there and see why the unit is not running. There'll be several reasons why a condensing unit doesn't run. Um, so we'll just grab our tools once I get this filter um, panel back on. We'll grab our tools and we'll go check that out. All right, there we go. That's back in place. So let's grab my tools and take a walk out here outside and figure out which condition you're in it. This home has uh, four systems. Um, it's a pretty large home, so we'll have to figure out which outdoor unit it is, but that shouldn't be hard. It's obviously the one that's not working. Okay, so we got a not cooling call. 
we've checked out the air handler and the thermostat. Everything seems to be okay in there. Now we'll take a walk around and figure out why uh, the condensing unit is not running. All right, so first thing first is identifying the unit in question. Home has four systems. Uh, so. I'm going to start over here because the system in question is serves the upstairs, uh, the kids room and the, uh, the gym. So I'm willing to bet this is one. Fergus over here that's not running. Looks like our guy. These other two are running. So um, we'll open the pallets up. We'll put some gauges on and we'll uh, take a look at everything and see what we got going on with the system. All right, so we identified the uh, down unit, and now that we've got it identified, we want to see why it's not cool. And first thing first, we'll check out to see if there's any refrigerant in it. If there isn't any refrigerant in it, the unit definitely uh, won't run. It has a low pressure cutout switch in it uh, to prevent there being any damage to the compressor if the unit runs out of refrigerant. It keeps the, the, comp the compressor from running so it doesn't damage the compressor, basic stuff. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll put gauges on it to see if it's any uh, refrigerant pressure. side holes off and we'll connect them we'll put our low side on first and right away we should know if there's any refrigerant in it and there is and it's R22 machine uh, equalized pressure 150 psi that appears to be about right so We'll connect this uh, high side and then we'll move on. So we know refrigerant is in the machine. So now let's go ahead and remove this panel cover and we'll uh, investigate a little further. We actually, it's a Linux heat pump. Like I said, it was installed in 2002. Uh, so, so we know it's refrigerant inside the unit. So the low pressure cutout switch should not be causing our problem. Uh, we do have something electrical going on because neither the fan nor the compressors is running. So we could have a loss of low voltage, low control voltage, or we have something else going on. So we'll take a look. All right, right away I see that uh, neither the, I see the contactor is not engaged. Uh, so we got a few uh, diagnostic codes on our control board here, flashing. Well, one is um, uh, is actually constantly lit. The number four code, so we can read um, the error codes and figure out why. And that give us a, a shortcut to troubleshooting. Um, certain boards have these uh, diagnostic codes on them, and you can identify the code and figure out what's going on. So we'll take a look at the diagnostic code chart here. So we got number four pressure switch open. It says number four on. So we got a pressure switch open. Now, like I said, we just put the gauges on it. We saw refrigerant is in the. Um, machine but it can have a pressure switch for other reasons like a restriction so uh if a restriction causes the um pressure on the low side to go in the vacuum and the pressure on the high side uh to go into high head pressure uh you got cutout switches that uh trigger diagnostic codes and shut the machine off so we got a low we got a low pressure reset switch down here we'll go ahead and hit that and see if the unit start and it did all right, right away the compressor started, but the condenser fan did not. 
So, with that condenser fan I ran, it would definitely go into a high hair pressure and uh, open up the switch and shut and shut off the uh, compressor for the diagnostic. So, next step is to find out why the condenser fan is not running. First place we'll look is at the uh, capacitor, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so we know the unit is cut down on high head pressure because of the condenser fan uh, motor not running. Uh, so we, we want to check, find out why the condenser fan motor not running. Before we check the capacitor, uh, let's check the shaft and the bearings on the motor itself. We'll just take a little stick and try to push it. All right, there we see this motor is uh, definitely seized. So this motor itself is bad. So... Uh, this fan motor definitely needs replacing the condenser fan motor. Now, uh, anytime you replace a condenser fan motor, you want to also put a uh, new capacitor on it that goes with the motor. So the current motor in there uses a uh, five microfarad capacitor. And this particular motor is if you can if you guys can see it. Probably can't, but this particular motor is a one six horsepower thousand seventy five. No, sorry, eight hundred twenty five RPM motor. So it's a six horse eight hundred twenty five RPM condenser motor. All right, I see if I have one on my truck, and so we'll install it.